Hello, I'm Bob Westerman. One of the most common usage for the middle lift crown and bridge removal system is when endodontics needs to be done on the tooth that was restored with a crown or a fixed bridge. That's because pups die and teeth become abscessed in about 18 percent of crown and bridge cases. You've probably heard it said that a pup can't distinguish between a carbide burr and a baseball bat. And that's why Gordon Christensen has said there are at least 14 iatrogenic reasons why these pups die after we've worked on the teeth. And he didn't even address the problems of secondary cares around crowns and bridges or periodontal disease. Many well done studies show that secondary caries occur in nearly 40% of all crown and bridge cases. And a large number of these cases end up needing endodontics as well. One of the problems of doing endodontics on the tooth that already has a crown on it is that we often ruin or destroy the occlusal surface of a beautiful crown or fixed bridge that we've done just on an abutment tooth just to gain access to the canals. Sometimes we have to remove the entire occlusal surface of a crown to determine the amount of natural tooth structure underneath it and to gain an unobstructed approach to the canals. And also, by going through the crown, we usually destroy a lot more tooth structure than we would like and weaken the supporting tooth structure below the crown. This in itself is a common cause of fixed bridge abutments failing. By working through an opening in a crown and trying to locate hard to find canals, we can waste lots of clinical time searching to enter the canals and get this thing that some people call endodontic vertigo. Now you've been there and you've done that and you know what I'm talking about. With the crown off, the orientation of the long axis of the tooth is obvious. With the crown on, however, it's not. The same holds true for the pulp chamber. With the crown off, it's dramatically easier to locate the hard to find canals and especially the mesiobuccal canals of upper and lower first molars, which are very often obstructed by the internal surface of that crown itself. These areas are also very easy to perforate because the canal is so close to the external surface of the remaining tooth structure. So doing endodontics is much easier when the crown of the bridge is off. And this is where the metal lift crown and bridge removal system is, is so very, very helpful. It's been used very effectively for many years. And it's used in graduate programs in both endodontics and fixed prosthodontics. And I'm going to show you some cases here I think you'll enjoy and see that it'd be much easier practicing dentistry by being able to remove crowns and fixed bridges. We have a lower left second molar that has a casco crown in it and the pup was in distress before we put the crown on it and um, we knew we might possibly have to come back and do endo and sure enough that is the case. So we're going to remove the crown <clears throat> then put a rubber dam on and do the endodontics. So so the first step is to take a number one high speed burn, just lay it down sideways and make a little indentation there so the burr won't skate around when I go back through vertically. Then I can turn the water on and go back through vertically. Then I'm going to take my metal lift burr and place over the pilot hole. You see a little white powder come up there? So I know I'm all the way through that into the cement and or the dentin. Okay. Next, I'm going to take a number 14 burr that's been flattened on the end. It has a flat surface and it will not uh, penetrate deeper into the dentin. And I'm going to go in here and just undermine the casting just a little bit so that the uh, I won't catch any dental threads when I go in to take the crown off. Then we take the metal lift and place over the pilot hole and uh, then just thread it through and when it goes down and hits the dentin <coughs> excuse me, it hits the dental surface I'm trying to get my fingers out of the way so I can see and then it oh. just breaks a cement oh. layer and, and, the crown's, and then the crown is off
I'd like to go ahead and do the ring this so that um, I can pull that bent mud out of there and clean it off, and I can inspect the um, I can inspect the flutes on the instrument at the same time. Oh, okay. Take the stopper off here and rinse those flutes off, please. We're getting to um, 20 millimeters right there. And we're going to 21 right there. And we're going to 21 on the tip of that cusp right here. So, okay, are we ready? Now we're ready to try on our points. Here we are with the gutta percha points tried in and ready to cement. So now we have the crown that's uh, cleaned out and uh, we're going to put a, a threaded channel, a key into the threaded channel and we just thread it through here like this and uh, we seal up that channel and the crown will be ready to cement. Take a little rubber wheel and polish that off just slightly. Polish it off slightly and you barely see the key. And if we ever need to take the crown off, which I doubt if we will, the key is there. We go back and just take the key out and put the metal left in it and uh, put the crown, uh, take the crown right out very easily. And here we are with the endo finished and the crown re-cemented back in place and the patient ready to go. And here we are with the crown re-cemented back on and you can see where the metal F key is right there, it's barely visible. And um, so the crown ought to function well, there's no harm done to the crown and we had better access to get in there to do a root canal so we could uh, get a good seal on it. We have a lower right first molar here that had uh, treated by silver points many many years ago with a crown on it and it's blown up and we need to try to disassemble this and get the silver points out and retreat the endo. And you can see down underneath the crown there's not very much tooth structure on the mesial or the distal. I suspect there may be somewhat on the buccal cusp or between the two buccal cusps and the buccal groove area so we're probably going to enter the crown right there and try and get the crown off. This is a lower right first molar had endodontics known on it that looks like many many years ago with silver points and um, it's blown up. We're going to um, take the crown off and disassemble it. So there's not much tooth structure underneath it. It looks like on the x-ray on the mesial or the distal. So I'm going to go kind of through the buccal cusp areas here and see if I can't find some tooth structure a little bit easier. The trick here is to get my hand out of the way of the camera. I think you can probably see right there pretty well. Make an initial pilot hole, and it's not very thick there, and there's tooth structure underneath it. At least the crown isn't very thick. So I'm going to go back with a medium burr and uh, see a little white powder come up there, and I know I'm through the metal. And next, I'm going to take a flat 14 burr, which is doesn't cut on the bottom side or the end of it, and I'm going to undermine the crown right here just a little little bit the metal just to get the um, get the dentin out from, or cement out from under that so that when I thread 
this crown that I don't not uh, catch the tooth underneath it as well. Then I simply take my metal lift instrument, uh, put it into the channel and thread it here with the finger pressure. Get down on the tooth structure pretty solidly there. And the crown comes right out. So it's out of there. Now I can go ahead and put the rubber dam on and uh, gain access to take out the silver points and um, retreat the endo. So I've excavated around these um, points. I thought they were silver points, but they actually um, look like um, thermophiles, the metal thermophiles. And uh, so we're going to get these out of here. number three. Now here's the finished picture with the um, endo completed. Now here's the finished picture with the um, endo completed and the, before the crown is cemented back on. You can see we've got a nice seal all the way through all four canals, a little extra puff of cement on the mesial. At least we're all the way through the canals now and this should heal up uneventfully. You notice the um, residual root tip, looks like from the lower deciduous E is there, and, but I don't think there's any pathosis associated with that. And that shouldn't be a problem either, so we expect really a, a good result from this uh, retreatment case. So you can see the crown with the um, back on the cemented back on the tooth, and you can see the key in the buckle groove. We've also marked the occlusion in red, and We'll adjust the occlusion, and uh, since it's an endo teeth, uh, we'll make absolutely sure that it's not too high. And uh, because of its high, it'll be really sensitive. So here you have the case all cemented back, disassembled and reassembled. And here's the case six months later, showing the bone grow back in with nice healing. And here's the radiograph approximately a year later showing uh, complete uh, healing on both mesial and distal roots. We have here a lower left first bicuspid that has a crown on it. I think she said about 10 years or something like that. So pulp has died on it, and uh, which often happens after a crown or bridge has been on a tooth for 10 years and endodontics is needed. And so, uh, rather than go through the crown, we're going to go ahead and uh, take the crown off and then do the endo and then put the crown back on. The first step then is to go ahead and remove the uh, porcelain on the occlusal surface to access the metal. There's already some porcelain missing right here, but we're just going to uh, uh, go through this transverse ridge on this first bicuspid and, uh, and access the metal there. Or it may be too thin on the other part where it was um, the metal was showing through. So we just access that metal. Then we take a number one high speed burr and uh, lay it down sideways and go through that metal. And we've already penetrated it. And uh, you can see right there, we penetrated the metal. Then it's very thin. That being the case, then I'm going to go back through here with a medium burr and not the regular one and make a, you can see the white powder come up there. And uh, I'm going to move this back just a tiny bit so that we can see just a little bit better. And I want you to aspirate that off there, please. So the next step then is to go in here with a number 14 burr and I'm going to undermine the metal. And uh, because this is a very uh, uh, thin crown 
and I want it to not catch any dent in threads as I go through the first three or four threads of my instrument. So I'm undermining under there and take that out. And uh, see the white powder that comes up there? Oops. Take that off. So next, I simply put my metal lift instrument in my prepared channel. I know my fingers are in the way. I'm going to back up again a little bit more so you can see. And uh, if you'll hold this right there, maybe you can see that. There we go. We can see that a little bit better like that. I know my fingers are in the way, but I'm just threading through with, with my finger pressure here. And uh, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see everything. But... What I'm trying to do is I want to be able to see that. There you go. So you can see the crown lift up. See the margin lift up as I turn it? Lifts up and crown is out. And um, just a few seconds after I get that precision channel in there. Now I'll go back in, put the rubber dam on, and do the endo. So there we there we have the rubber dam on and uh, we have a crown uh, a root canal measured now. You can see with the crown off we've had to destroy very little tooth structure underneath it. If we'd gone through the crown then we would have had to uh, fish around under there and destroy a valuable tooth structure that's uh, uh, the abutment for the, for the, uh, the preparation for the, that was holding the crown and would have weakened it considerably. But with the crown off we destroyed very little tooth structure. Now we've taken the crown into the laboratory technician and um, he just went back and refired the porcelain and closed up that occlusal there so it'll look pretty. It's down on the lower left first back cusp so it'll be visible so now you don't see any metal and uh, we're going to get her crown re-cemented and, uh, and everything will be completed. Disassembled and reassembled. So there's our crown that's re-cemented back on and it actually looks better than it did before we took it off because the metal was showing through it the first time and then we've refired the porcelain on it and it should do fine. So here's the finished radiograph on tooth number 21 and you can see a lateral canal about 6 or 7 millimeters up on the distal of the root that was sealed up in a little slight puff of cement there. So we got a good result. The crown's back on. Looks better than it did before. and. Uh, should be a good success. We have an upper right first molar that has a porcelain fused of metal. I think it's non-precious alloy, a non-precious alloy crown, and it looks like non-precious because on the radiograph, the radiograph goes all the way through the metal. So the pump is bad, tender percussion has been hurting her for two days, so we're going to attempt to remove this non-precious crown, take the crown off, do the endo, and then put the crown back on. So it's a pretty crown, and uh, but we need to uh, get it off and I'm going to go through the central fossa first with a uh, D2 diamond and um, you can see that, I think you can see that, okay, that's right for please. Can see where I've gone through it. Next I'm going to take a number one high speed burr and I'm going to just lay the burr down sideways just for a second or so, put a little dot in it. And you can see that happens a lot on very very thin metal and that metal is so very thin. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start this channel with a CBRS medium burr and it penetrates through there and gets down into the mushy something, a dentin or something. So next I'm going to take a flat 14 burr which doesn't cut on the end of the bottom side of it and I'm just going to go around in here and take out any, um, any dentin or cement 
up underneath the crown so that'll make dental threads when I go in there to take the crown out. Then I take my metal lift instrument and put in there and then thread into that crown. This got a little better. I'm going to touch it this way just a little bit. Maybe back up just a tad so you can see that. I'm trying to see on the top. Just feel the crown lift right off. And, uh, and it's pretty long parallel walls, pretty deep crown. And uh, now we're going to go back and take the uh, rubber dam, put the rubber dam on that tooth and take the pulp out and do the endo. And then we'll have the crown ready to put back in. Now we have the canal opened up and we can uh, see the canals much better with the crown off. There are actually, I think, four canals here. You have two, uh, uh, MB1, MB2. and. Uh, so now we can get in there and gain access, do the endo, and uh, then come back and put the crown back on. Here we have our finished uh, endo on tooth number three prior to resubmitting the crown and getting it uh, reassembled after disassembling it. Now we've taken the crown and put a metal lift key in it with this key wrench and then put composite resin around it and uh, so you see about a 027 inch uh, opening there and if we ever need to remove this crown again then we can just go in and take this key and unthread it and put the metal F instrument back in and remove the crown so we have a removable crown now but um, and so it looks good and it's ready to go back in service it's just, just as good as it was before Now here it is from the inside of the crown all cleaned out. You see the metal lift key there. So now we've coated the inside of the uh, key with a rouge latex separator so that the cement won't bond to it or stick to it so the key will always be removable anytime we ever need to remove the crown. So here it is with the crown back in place and you can see where the metal lift key is. And the crown is all cemented back in there. It's ready to go back for service and it'll do very well. We have a upper right second by customer that has two canals in it. It has a crown on it, of course infused to metal crown. And the pulp has died, so we're going to remove this crown and uh, rather than destroy a lot of the occlusal surface of the crown to find, especially to find two canals, one's bad enough, but uh, going through a crown, but uh, also destroys a lot of tooth structure underneath it. So we're going to remove the crown to um, gain access to the canals to get better vision and uh, so we don't do play endodontic vertigo in there going through this crown and then do the endodontics. First step is to take a number two diamond, cylindrical shaped diamond about a 560 size and we're going to remove the porcelain to gain access to the metal and then we we'll use the metal lift to get the crown off. So we go in with a number two diamond and gain access here vertically. And there's still a little portion on the lingual half of it. So we'll get that off. The metal's not always flat underneath it, so sometimes you have to go at a little bit different angle. That's much better. Then we take a number one high speed burr and I turn the water off and um, lay the burr down sideways just to put an indentation right in the center of that the best I can. And when I did that, I penetrated through the metal, so we know that metal is very, very thin. So I'm going to go back and take a diamond again and get a little bit more porcelain off of there 
because my um, I don't want that instrument hitting up against the porcelain because it will fracture the porcelain. a little better. So since that is so thin I'm going to take the medium burr and uh, put my channel in with that. That's pretty hard. So let's go back with your small burr and we'll progress up. white powder come up there and that and then next we'll take the medium bird you can aspirate that off of there please okay so we're going to go back in then with the do the small we go back with the medium burr to widen the channel and uh, this burr is a little dull but I'm through the metal and next we'll go back with the um, a flat number 14 that doesn't cut on the bottom surface and I'll undermine that metal a little bit so that we don't catch dental threads when we go through there because this metal is so thin you have to thread past it a little bit the first three or four threads of the metal left then we take our metal lift instrument with lubrication on it and we put it in that channel and we thread it through here. And we just thread through there and we lift the crown off just like that, just in a few seconds. It's all it takes. Because we've gone through and we have hit uh, uh, the dental surface and it broke the cement layer, took the crown right out. So now we'll go back, put a rubber dam on, and we'll be able to gain access to that canal, or uh, both canals, uh, much, much easier. So here we have uh, excavated here with a long shank number two and it's hard enough to find these canals with the crown off much less with the crown on. We'll tell them how much tooth structure would have destroyed. We found the lingual canal here and we found the buccal canal and uh, it's just so much easier to see with that uh, crown off of there and so much better for the tooth. Now we've taken the crown and a metal lift key on a metal lift key wrench and I'm going to insert this key into that canal and thread it down about even with the occlusal surface of the tooth. And we hold it right there and then we inject around there some flow restore in this case, something that's going to match. Inject it all around. We can roll it over like that if you like and just kind of paint it on there. Okay. Just, and then that's good, that's plenty right there. And it's kind of hard to hold it still here with the camera, but go ahead and cure that. That's good. Then we take the key out and maybe cure back over that a little bit. It doesn't take but a few seconds, that's good. And then we go back and we'll polish this down and make it smooth with the occlusal surface. You just hardly be able to see the inner of that crown at all, but you can see there's an opening here that's 0.027 inches in diameter and it's solid metal. It goes down to less than a millimeter, about a millimeter down into that crown and it will not leak. And then if we ever need to remove the crown again for any other reason, that key is there. We just simply unscrew that key and then we um, we can go back in with the metal lift and take that uh, crown off again if we ever need to. So that crown is ready to go back on and, uh, and he'll be out of here very shortly. The same crown that he came in with, no damage to the crown. So now we go ahead and take the, um, our crown and get him re-cemented. You know, bite on that please sir. And we'll peel that off and we're just as the crown is just as good a shape as when we started.
And now this is our crown re-cemented. And uh, you can see where the key is. And uh, there's a, see right there where the key is. And uh, if I want to too, I could come back and unscrew this and then actually put the metal lift back and remove that crown again if ever I needed to. So this is our finished radiograph uh, showing the two canals at different angles and got, the, got it sealed up and the crown re back on. So I expect this patient not to have any further problems and uh, expect a, a good result. We have a lower fixed bridge here that was done uh, 10 years ago and um, it was a I had an old bridge and it was replaced but the pulps died now and um, so we want to remove this bridge it's a pretty bridge and it's a functional bridge so we want to remove it and uh, save the bridge and get do the endo rather than cutting a large hole in the occlusal surface here and destroying that occlusal surface and a lot of tooth underneath it so the first step here is is to remove the porcelain off of the bicuspid so that we can gain access to the metal and I suspect the metal is probably pretty thin under the bicuspid, so I'm going to go kind of in the distal triangular fossa and get my hand out of the way so you can see here. This is a distal triangular fossa and hope the metal's a little bit thicker right there. I'm going to go in here and access that metal. can see there where we've accessed the metal and then I'm going to use the number one high speed burr next to penetrate through there and also to go through the uh, the molar so I'm going to lay the burr down sideways put an indentation there and uh, same thing over here and I'm going to go kind of to the lingual on the molar a little bit if I get my hand to move that please I'll get my hand in there and I'm going to go through the lingual here a little bit so I can then go back vertically. Okay. And we made, made our uh, initial pilot hole there. My mirror is kind of dirty, you can't see. So we made an initial pilot hole to go through there. Now, since the metal is very thin, I'm going to use a medium uh, CBRS burr. Okay, I just made it through the metal. Same now, see the powder come up. And we'll put that off of there. And I'm ready for the metal left now. So, then we'll put the metal lift in here and thread that through. Might have stripped out, I don't know. I'll have to feel either it came loose or it stripped one or two. Because this is very soft uh, gold, very soft metal. And the back one is lifted off. You can see back there where it's lifted off. And I suspect the front one is probably lifted off as well. So I'm push. There we go. That's back down. I don't want to put too much pressure on that front bicuspid.
and I think I needed a flat 14 to go underneath and undermine it just a little bit. You see how the bicuspid is lifting off now? So we have the whole bridge. It's need a small carver, please. I'm gonna relieve the pressure on that. Then I'm gonna have the the molar, which is loose. They both are loose, so and the bridge is all out of there and uh, now we can uh, clean the bridge up put some keys in it go in here put a rubber dam on the molar do the endodontics and uh, then replace the bridge so I've taken a uh, key wrench and put a metal lift key in here and threaded that key down into the metal. Now I'm going to take just a little uh, composite, a little flowable composite and flow around there. Go around on the inside a little bit. That's good. Do the explorer and I'll spread that around there a little bit. And uh, then we'll take that and cure it and uh, I'll leave the key wrench in there so I won't get the uh, any material down inside the my channel to take the key out that's good and so we have the key wrench in there and uh, we'll just polish down over that just a little bit and then we'll put the bridge back in. We'll have a key also put in here on the lingual and we'll polish that over and it'll be ready then to put the bridge back in. It'll be a removable bridge. We can take it out anytime we want. And here's the finished radiograph showing how the lateral canal is coming out the distal of the root on the distal root. Then the mesial little slight puff of excess cement that's coming out so we should get a, a good result on this we put the bridge back on she should get many more years of service out of it okay, let's rinse that off we have a lower left uh, fixed bridge one two three four five units and uh, the bridge has uh, come loose in the front you can see it percolate right here and uh, the cuspid and the bicuspid as a matter of fact there's decay up under the lingual of the bicuspid in here and but it's still attached to the molar and the tooth that doesn't have extremely strong bone support but it's a pretty healthy tooth back here and we don't want to bang that tooth and uh, we don't want to uh, hit it with a hammer to knock it off so we're going to move remove the metal lift crown and bridge removal system the first step will be then to lay the burr down sideways and uh, make an indentation in the metal. And it looks like this metal probably is non-precious alloy. But then I go back, make an indentation, then I turn my water back on, I go back in vertically and uh, find that it's very, very... Now, let's go back in vertically there. And we found that it was very, very thin. So next I'm going to use my medium burr since the metal is so thin. It's pretty hard. You see how hard non-precious alloy is. Even though it's thin, it's really difficult. See the powder come up there? And uh, then we'll aspirate that powder off of the surface. And I'm going to go in here with a special number 14 burr underneath it. And I'm going to undermine and get a little powder out of here and I want to undermine that that uh, the cement and the dent or whatever's underneath that metal so that I want to create any dental threads when I go back in there. So 
So I've lubricated my metal lift. I'm going to put it right here in this channel and then thread that through. It's kind of hard on this left side to get my fingers out of the way so you can see, but just penetrated through the metal. And once I got through the metal, you see that touched the denton, then the bridge just dislodged and came right out. So there we have it. So now we can go back and address the problem with the bicuspid, get that cleaned out, and then uh, do what is necessary to save that bicuspid if we can. If you have any questions or need technical assistance on removing crowns or fixed bridges, please feel free to call and we'll be glad to help you out.